Hello watch enthusiasts. Now on this channel I like to think the watches I review are of good quality and also good value. But however I do realise that a lot of the watches I review and for example the dive watches I review are priced rather highly at uh, over say £500 into the thousands of pounds. And whilst this is not enormous by comparison to some watches in the industry which do cost uh, far far more than that, it still is uh, an amount of money which requires a great deal of thought to spend and is, uh, is certainly a significant investment for whoever, whoever chooses to go down that route. And so it's always nice to see a watch at a more affordable price, which offers a great deal to a buyer, and offers something which is, is genuinely impressive for that market, um, and, uh, and also provides something a bit interesting and, and uh, different. And today I have a watch which may well provide that, and it's the Benarus Moray 42. And I've been speaking to Benarus since this, uh, this summer, in fact, um, when uh, a series of quite peculiar events put me in contact with them. And I was keen to review one of their watches because I think the quality of their pieces and the, the design and standards they hold their watches to are very impressive. And these watches are £400, and I think this says a great deal about the way they've gone about making these watches, because they don't, for example, feature a Swiss movement, instead using a very high-grade Japanese one. And at this stage in the video, I would of course like to state that I'm not being, uh, being endorsed or paid to provide a, a favourable review. Um, if I review a watch on this channel, it's because it's uh, it's been sent with prior prior agreement with the brand, and uh, and if I do receive the watch and I'm not happy with the quality, or I feel the standards simply aren't something I would recommend, then I simply send the watch back. And so I would therefore like to state this isn't a biased review in any direction, and you will note that during the review I will point out a couple of things that I would change about this watch, which I think are, are negatives to the package. However, in general, my feelings about this watch are because I've been able to, to wear this watch for a few days and get a real feel for the quality it's offering and the details you're able to have. Now, before I speak about the watch itself, I'd actually like to put it to one side and speak about what you receive with the watch when you buy it, because I feel this says a great deal about the brand and what they're willing to offer. Now, the watches are provided with this, uh, this rather attractive watch roll with full Benarus branding in this very high-quality leather, which I must say smells absolutely wonderful and has that distinctive leather smell, which matches the leather strap the watch comes with. And this is bound, as you can see, with this, um, this, this leather cord, which, uh, which you simply tuck in to, uh, to secure, which opens up and then allows you to have this, uh, this four-watch watch roll for travelling. And they really have taken care with this, because with a lot of watch rolls, the, uh, the upper flap only comes to about there, whereas with this they've given it a full-size flap for added convenience, and just the fact that it does provide you with a bit more for your money. Now, if this is flipped open, you can see the inside is this wonderful sort of suede nubuck feel, and uh, and is matching leather, of course, to the um, the, the external elements which are fitted to these uh, these rolls, of course, such as the cord and such as these fixtures. But if one opens it up, one has the uh, the warranty card here, and uh, and as well as this, one also gets a few accessories, such as, for example, this spring bar tool, which is used um, through the the watch's drilled lugs to be able to release the uh, the strap and allow you to change it. One also has these different slots, and that's because these are filled with different straps, one of which is the leather strap I have on the watch at the moment, which I think is a really wonderful match for the piece, with these, these embossed uh, elements and, uh, and features which I will talk about later on in the video. One also has this, uh, this, uh, this style of natural rubber tropical strap for, the, for the, the watch, which is particularly high quality, and is something I haven't seen provided with a watch before of such high quality. And then, of course, one has the metal bracelet, which is another element of the video which I'd like to devote a fair bit of time to, because it has a great deal of interesting features within that clasp, but also has a few elements of the bracelet, which are, are, are elements which provide positives and negatives to this watch, though I think that the inclusion of all of these elements in a £400 watch is pretty impressive. But without any further ado, I would like to speak about the, the watch itself, and so I'll move all of this out of the way and get straight to it. And here's the watch outside the box, or rather the, uh, the roll, if, uh, if you will. Because this is a piece which takes inspiration from a variety of mid-century dive watches, from elements from Panerai in the case, to perhaps a little bit of, uh, of Rolex in the red of the bezel, and then a large crown, and that uh, rather interesting dial. But I would say this watch is very, very far from any sort of homage watch, and is very much its own design, which I do appreciate. And the sizing of this watch is uh, 42mm from side to side, with 48mm from lug to lug, and it is in fact 12.5mm thick, including the crystal. Now in terms of the design of this watch, um, and the, the general build uh, in, in relation to the rest of the Benarus range, one sees this, this comes in on the larger side, and this is because they produce both the, uh, the Moray 38 and 40. 
but how these are, are very different watches because the 40 is a, a bronze dive watch whilst the 38 is a thousand meter dive watch with a much more stocky form to the case and so I think this particular model is the most attractive in terms of having a, a unique sort of uh, combination of features and designs. And so the watch itself is stainless steel, as you can see, and so has polished elements on the side, which are polished to a, a very high degree, and as you can see, show a, a really wonderful reflection. Whilst one also has brushed elements on the top of the case, with the lugs, um, as you can see, having this, this circular brushing, um, whilst the, uh, the, the lug protrusions, as you can see, which take out the, the edges of the case, one's able to see a, a lengthways brushing. Then one also has a matching rotary brushing on the bezel to match the case, which allows the whole watch to take on a very unified form, and allows the bezel to almost disappear when looked at the watch at a glance. And the piece itself also features this very large crown, which features a bead blasted run around its edge there, and then also features uh, brushing on its top. And this brushing also um, takes, takes the place around this very deeply engraved Benarus logo, which is both complex and also quite simple as it appears to look like a propeller, though the case back clarifies that it's in fact three dolphins around that central point. And the design of the watch, as a result, is very, very vintage in its inspirations. It's a piece which is, uh, is in many ways influenced by the past, and I must say I rather like the way it's been executed in that form. Of course, the case also features a few elements which stand out immediately, and the crystal is one of these, because as you can see, the crystal is very heavily box-domed, and this is a sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating on the inside. And so what that means is that you get the, the best of both worlds by having no sort of coating to scratch on the outside of the sapphire crystal, thus allowing the highest possible scratch resistance, whilst also having that element of anti-reflective coating to the inside, which means you can read the watch really to extreme angles, where the distortion of the crystal becomes a slight issue, although you wouldn't expect to be able to read a watch at this angle anyway. And so actually the doming helps to keep the dial in focus for most views, which is a helpful feature, and also makes the watch appear a little bit more charming with that extra bubble on the front of it. And bearing in mind the fact the watch is 12.5mm thick, this hasn't added a great deal to the thickness of this 300m dive watch, which is extremely slender, bearing in mind its case design, although it does have these wonderful drop-down lugs. But the general uh, design, I think, is offset as well by the crown, which is very, very large, and as you, you can see, protrudes from the side of the case, and gives an excellent grip when winding the watch, or indeed setting the time, or simply unscrewing the crown, because it does have a screw-down crown. One, of course, also has that rotating bezel, which is, uh, is rather a nice touch, and I think helps to, to unify the front of the watch and give it a certain purpose as a dive watch. This does feel like a very satisfying design, though, because the, the curvature of the case and the execution of this, this finishing is really phenomenal for a £400 watch. The, the, the mirroring of the, the polishing is extremely high quality, and as you can see, allows the whole case to take on a very interesting form. And whilst there is a very real Panerai influence to this case, I think the fact that the bezel, the dial, and, and the other elements of this watch are very different means that one sim can simply take this case for what it is, a very attractive and uh, rather exaggerated cushion case. And it's the curvature of these elements which come down to meet the wrist which are particularly attractive, whilst also having the curved lugs allow it to be very comfortable on the wrist, though of course I will explain that later. And even the crown, which is quite large in its, uh, its size and has this bead-blasted finish, matches the very edge of the bezel, which, as you can see, also has a bead-blasted edge, which gives it greater grip. Then, of course, the case back features the, the logo of the brand with that, uh, that very distinctive three dolphin and, and snowflake form with the, the waves around the edge, and does show the fact that this is a, a watch with a sapphire crystal and a 300 meter water resistance. It also states the fact that this watch is, uh, is a watch with a Miyota 90S5, and this is an interesting movement because it provides a really a great deal for the price, and is a movement I respect a great deal because it, it does offer a, uh, a comparable sort of accuracy, but also a comparable sort of feel to uh, sort of an ETA 2824 or that sort of equivalent. And speaking then about the, the bezel, because of course this is a major part of the front of the watch, the bezel is a 120 click bezel, and as you can see, pops very cleanly between the indices or the markers and doesn't have any play at all and also has a very good grip from this, so this coin edge, despite the fact that these are quite shallow uh, divots, because one has a very good and very clean edge to, to grasp onto, where the, the, uh, the gap between the edge of the case and the, uh, the bezel thins. And so one can very easily turn the bezel without any sort of concern or trouble, and, uh, and bring it back to, to 12 o'clock, of course. And the bezel itself is, of course, brushed steel, and does follow that, uh, that circular graining. But I feel the whole design of the bezel reminds me a great deal of both uh, Rolexes, for example, with that red uh, red triangle, but also with this particular dial, of which there are, there are three different options. But with this dial, I do feel this watch has a very distinct Vostok Amphibia sort of feel. And that's down to, on the bezel, these numerals, which uh, follow Arabic numeral forms, but their particular font does remind me, though not the same, 
of, uh, of those, um, those mid-century Soviet dive watches. And the whole feel of this watch really does make one feel uh, like, uh, like this watch belongs more in a, in a nuclear submarine than, than on land, but I feel the whole design of this watch works together very, very well. And one element to note on the bezel is that it isn't, it isn't loomed. And that is a concern, I think, because it would be nice to see a dive watch with a, a luminous bezel, because this is a, a major criterion for using a dive watch regularly and, and using it functionally. However, I do feel that for most users this shouldn't be too much of a problem, bearing in mind the fact that when diving, if you do happen to be using this watch, um, most people won't dive at night. And in fact, if you're diving at night without a torch or something like that, then uh, um, quite frankly the, uh, the, the use of, um, of a glowing luminous marker is going to be very minimal anyway. However, I do feel that for the sake of, uh, of, of functionality it really should have a luminous bezel, despite the fact that this won't be functional for the vast majority of people. And then of course one has the dial. Because as you can see, the dial is black, and in fact there are three different dial variants, one with straight indices, one with these uh, four sort of numerals with these, these battens as well, and then one with a, a style of, uh, of California dial more similar to those used on Panerai's. And this is my favourite because I feel it balances out the best, and also does give off that sort of Russian submarine feel, which I think looks fantastic with this particular design of watch. And of course the dial is an interesting design because it does look like a style of sandwich construction, and one can say it's halfway there. Because as you can see, the top layer of the dial is actually cut out, and underneath it, one sees, although shallowly underneath, um, these markers uh, it put into the dial. And this creates an effect of depth, which is extremely appealing, whilst also allowing the indices to contain a great deal of lume. And in fact, the, 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 the longevity of the lume on this watch has been excellent, with the longevity in excess of eight hours. And now having moved the hands, one can also appreciate the detailing on these. Because as you can see, the surface of the hands is polished to match various elements of the case, but it's done to a very high standard, especially for this price range, and I think the proportions with the hands are also excellent. But what should be noted is the fact that the, um, the hands themselves have these, uh, these breaks in their luminous markings, and whilst this allows the, um, the, the design to appear more old-fashioned, because these were used, and indeed still are used, to contain lumen, stop it from falling out under, um, uh, under strong shocks, this does allow the, the, the hands to line up extremely well when passing each other, because the, the individual lines which cross the hands cross each other perfectly at the exact same distance from the centre. Then of course one also has the second hand, and the second hand features this, uh, this style of, of lollipop end, which has a, a, a sort of a, an extra additional bit of hand before reaching the, the, the individual markers. And what this means is that you're able to have a, a more classic design than, say, the lollipop hand seen on some Omega Seamasters where it was right on the end, but you do get an enlarged lollipop, and so it's not a, a very small luminous marking on there, but rather a very large one which does last just as long as the hands themselves for the hours and the minutes, which is greatly appreciated, and is surprisingly rarely the case. And of course the dial and the hands are treated with, uh, with old radium style superluminova, and this allows the watch to glow extremely brightly at night, as I will show you, um, but also gives this off-toned sort of colour, which I think works extremely well with the, uh, the red which is painted into the bezel, as are the rest of the indices on that bezel. And then, of course, if one considers the movement, this watch does have a, uh, a great deal to, to talk about. Because the movement inside this watch is the Miyota 9, uh, 90S5, which is essentially a no-date version of the 9015. And the 9015 range, or the 9000 range in general, is Miyota's most modern line of, um, of movements that are bought by other brands. And these movements run at the same beat rate as an ETA 2824, so they run at 8 ticks a second, which gives you a very smooth run to the second hand, and does, um, it does appear slightly more luxurious in that form than, say, a, um, a 3 hertz movement, which would run at 6 ticks a second. And so aside from that, you also get a very, very smooth operation. And this is something which is seen on these, these watches, and is so often the case with these Miyota movements, is that for winding the watch, one has an extremely smooth operation, whilst also having a similarly smooth operation for changing the time, which incidentally can be done extremely quickly thanks to the very large crown on this watch, and so you can advance it by several hours with very little sort of fiddling around or turning the crown. And if one looks again at the, uh, the design of the case, this watch is a, is a 300 meter dive watch as stated by the dial. And bearing in mind the fact that this watch has very little text on the dial, I think they've chosen this very well, simply having Benarus and 300 meters. And this allows the watch to, to really take on a very military form, and I think complements the design of this watch very, very well because it means the watch appears to be very tool-like in its, its form, and functions very well and very much along those lines of being a, a tool watch above all. And before speaking about the, the watch itself on the wrist, I would like to talk about the various strap options which are available. Notably one receives this tropical strap with the watch, and as you can see this provides you with a, a very supple sort of strap, which whilst also still having a, a slight firmness to it, 
has a very a very smooth bend, which is far more like leather than um, than a, a silicon strap, for instance. One also notices that it is perforated to give your your wrist the ability to breathe, which is appreciated, whilst also having a traditional style of of backing with these um, these diamond shaped cuts to allow the again breathing of the wrist. Then on the other half, uh, one sees that it has two keepers, which is something a lot of people appreciate and don't like having just the one. Um, and so I do appreciate the fact they've included two. And one has a signed buckle. And of course, being natural rubber, it also has the property of not collecting lint or dust when you're wearing it, whilst also having the, the advantage of smelling like vanilla, which is, uh, is rather a nice touch. Of course, one also has the bracelet the watch comes with. And though I, I prefer this watch on a strap because I think it complements the design, I must respect the fact that the, um, the bracelet itself is well made. The, the clasp itself, I think, though, is the, the, the real talking point, because it's, it's very attractively brushed, and has a very fine level of brushing along the top, but also along these bevels on the edge. It's also then engraved with the, the, um, the, the Benarus logo, and then has a, a very firm double-button deployant uh, clasp, whereas you can see it has these solid milled pieces of steel, rather than having any sort of pressed elements. And this means it closes with a very firm click, and doesn't move at all. It also has a ratcheting function, which uh, which comes from the inside of this um, this this section of the, uh, the the clasp itself. It does mean the clasp is quite thick, but uh, but I think it works very well for this particular timepiece, and that sits beside the micro adjustment for the bracelet length. And so, if you pull back these two sections, this allows this at this part of the the bracelet to be extended by that uh, that amount. This can then be ratcheted back in, as you you see. And, and also will fit between any of these points, so you can really get the watch to fit as, uh, as well as you would want when diving, or simply if you want to wear the watch over a sleeve, for instance, in the cold. Now, another element to note about this bracelet is the general build of the rest of it. And the links are solid, but uh, as you can see, don't feature much detailing other than brushing. And I think this is a, a slight weak point to this package as a whole, though admittedly for £400, I don't know if I can complain. But the detailing is uh, somewhat lower th on the, the bracelet than on the clasp, which has a visibly finer level of brushing, as you can see. Um, but still, the, the bracelet is still of, of not no noticeably decent quality. And also something which people will appreciate is that it has screwed links. And though I don't think screwed links are the be-all and end-all of things, and in fact I think that in many cases pins are, when push comes to shove, more secure, um, for the simple reason that uh, movement of the wrist uh, has no way of dislodging them, the, the additional advantage and, uh, and convenience of having screws is really a fantastic benefit when wearing this watch, and especially if you want to size up the bracelet relatively quickly and without using, um, using any sort of specialist tools other than a screwdriver. And if I go back to the watch itself, you'll notice I have it on the leather strap provided, and I feel this is a really nice option provided with the watch, because as you can see it has this very, uh, very thick grain to it and, uh, and has this wonderful sort of distressed feel with distinct graining to it and lines um, in this distressed surface. It also has weaving here where the strap has been brought back through and then stitched and of course has branding with Benarus and, uh, and then genuine Italian leather on the other side. And it's not a backed piece of leather but rather has this, um, this very thick construction which means it feels more, more rugged and more robust than a more refined sty uh, style of, of strap. Then of course one has the Keeper, which is uh, alone as the Keeper on this watch, but thanks to its large size I found it to be very usable. And one has the, the Benarus uh, logo then embossed into the surface of this as a rather nice touch. The, uh, the, the buckle itself also is different to the one on, the, um, uh, on the, the rubber strap, in that it has the logo rather than the name engraved into it, which is another nice touch and I think works very very well with this timepiece. And here's the watch on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist, which uh, varies between 6 and 3 quarters and 7 inches, but certainly is, is a, a perfectly reasonable size to wear this watch. And whilst at 42mm it is a, a significant size of timepiece, I think it wears its size extremely well thanks to those short lugs, and whilst the one does have a, an overall length of 48.8mm lug to lug length, the fact that this wraps around the wrist means that it's a very, very comfortable option, especially on a well-weighted 22mm leather strap like this, which allows the whole watch to be very well balanced. And whilst weighing 168 grams um, on the, the leather strap, it, uh, it is still able to, to be comfortable despite being quite a heavy piece, and certainly I think because of that weighting, those curved lugs and the low profile case, one's able to wear it very comfortably for long periods of time. Also, the bezel is easily gripped and, uh, and is easily used whilst on the wrist, without any sort of slipping or, uh, or, or, or lack of, um, of, of ease of grip on its sides. And so here's the watch in the dark, and as you can see, there isn't any loom on the bezel, which is a downside to this watch, and I think is something which would be nice to see changed. But the dial itself and the hands are extremely bright and very, very long-lasting, 
lasting around uh, eight hours I've seen with, uh, with a very decent level of legibility. And this is down to just the amount of loom which has been applied, but also with those delineations between the, the different sections of the hands, one's able to have a, a very clear and very legible breakdown of what's actually present there. And uh, also with, uh, with the, um, the, the fact that the dial is very simple, with these four, four, uh, four quadrants to it, I think it works very, very well as a very legible timepiece at night. Of course, also with that large second-hand uh, luminous pip, one can really tell the time, really at a glance, even in pitch darkness, which I think is a real benefit to this timepiece. And so in conclusion, I think the price of 449 US dollars for this watch is pretty astounding, bearing in mind what you're able to get with the quality of the case, the finishing of the watch in general, and the build of this timepiece. And whilst it does have some, some shortcomings, for example in the bracelet, which uh, is slightly a lower uh, quality in terms of the finishing, um, though admittedly not the functionality um, of as the rest of the watch, one still is getting an incredibly high quality st standard piece with a, a really great movement, brilliant case finishing, and design which is timeless, whilst also having a slightly military and a slightly vintage feel, which I really do love. And so do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this watch and indeed of this video. If you did enjoy the video though, please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel and also to be able to see more videos con and content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Zalman the Watch Guy, out.